Hey everybody, it's Allie and welcome to our YNR chat for Sunday, April 8th. It seems there's one name on everyone's lips this week and that name is Genevieve. She has really quickly become one of the most controversial characters on the show. In so many ways, her personality is starting to unfold in a really unflattering way, but at the same time, I like her. She gets me talking. I think that she's someone who I wouldn't like in real life, but she's there's just something about her. She has this kind of desperate, uh, slash devious, quality about her that is, I find, very appealing. And everyone in Genoa City, and I'm sure on the web and outside of all the fans, are talking about beauty of nature and Genevieve's decision to sell it. She just hinted at wanting to sell it, and the sharks are circling. It's been an interesting week. Genevieve wants to sell the company. She wants to get rid of it, and she wants to sell it to Jack, so it turns out. I think she sees selling Beauty of Nature to Jack as a way to start all over again, to g turn back the clock and right a wrong. And unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think that that's going to work out very well for her, but she actually goes to Jack this week and offers to sell him Beauty of Nature in exchange for them getting back together. In fact, it was literally, I will sell you Beauty of Nature if you marry me. Head <laughs> explosion. Really, Genevieve? I, I have to admit, <laughs> as much as I like her, she's creeping me out in those scenes. She was so desperate that it was creeping me out. Who has to bribe someone to marry them? It was very weird. It has started to make me believe that Kane has kind of been right about her all along. He's seen her throughout his lifetime going through things like this and, and operating the way she does. And it's slowly starting to become revealed. She started out as such a ignored housewife, and she's developed into such a demented, twisted character. And I think that she is a very smart woman, but she's also making these huge steps that are just too big for her. I think she wants to be seen as a power player, yet every time she goes to make a play, she stumbles and ends up looking like a fool because Jack is real. Uh, he's agreeing to this entire deal. You can almost visually see the wheels turning around in Jack's mind knowing that this is an opportunity for him to A, get Beauty of Major, which is what he wanted all along, and B, get revenge on Genevieve for leaving him, dumping him at the altar. It was so clear to me, watching those scenes, that Jack was planning to screw her over so hard, but she didn't see it. She. Again, desperate is the only word to describe it. She's so desperate that she is completely divorced herself from the reality of the situation. She thinks that Jack is just going to forgive her in a snap and go back to the way things were and get married and start all over again after all of the bitter conversations that they've had. After... My goodness, everything that he's gone through in his life, she hasn't been there for him one iota since he lost the use of his legs and she just thinks that she's going to float back into his life and everything's going to be fine again and it's ridiculous it's it's terribly 
deluded. Now, for Jack's part, the entire time I'm thinking, no, Jack, no, don't do it. Just don't do it. There's got to be another way around this. You don't have to marry her in order to get the company. There's got to be another way. I, I mean, I, I want Jack to get the company. I want Jack to win. I want Jack to be happy. But, I mean, not if it means marrying someone that he doesn't love. And I can completely see why this situation, this opportunity, is so appealing to Jack. I totally understand where he's coming from. He would love to have something to hold on to when there's nothing else in his life that he can hold on to. He's systematically lost everything in his life over the course of the past couple of months and here this opportunity presents itself and he is perfectly willing to just reach up and snag it. And in a way I can't blame him for that, but at the same time I think he is uh, a fool for even thinking about getting back involved with her. She is toxic. Genevieve is just this kind of person who uh, just everything she touches turns brown. She just has that way about her. As soon as she puts her, lays her fingers on it, it starts to wither and die. <laughs> and I'm not sure if getting Beauty of Nature back would even be worth that for Jack. And I mean, plus, I, I just, I question whether or not Jack and Genevieve were ever in love in the first place. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I feel that love includes trust and honesty and loyalty. Being with each other through the good situations, through the bad situations, for better and for worse. And none of those apply to Jack and Genevieve. Genevieve deceived him and then bailed out left him when he really needed her the most. True, he was pushing her away, but she kind of stepped away. And I just don't know that their relationship was ever what it, what they made it out to be, what maybe we made it out to be. So, my goodness, I think that marrying her would be a huge mistake. And, and Jack is certainly, in my opinion, he's making some mistakes. <laughs> in a couple of ways right now. Let's just talk for a second about this experimental surgery. Because if Jack were my friend, if he were my husband, I would be doing exactly what Nikki and Ashley are doing. I would be insisting that this surgery is not the right way to go. It's an all or nothing gamble. If he goes for the surgery and it doesn't work out, the way he wants it to, he could never walk again. Whereas the physical therapy road is a long, uh, arduous road, but something where he could achieve the results that he wanted. If the surgery goes wrong, he never walks again. So if Jack is someone in my life, I would absolutely advise him not to do it. However, <laughs> in the world of YNR, <laughs> this do it. Get the surgery, Jack, because it's the only thing that's going to get him up and walking again, and I'm sick of seeing him isolated. You may have noticed I haven't really even hardly commented on him in the last couple of weeks just because it feels snoozeville to me. Him sitting in the chair is just, he's been isolated from all of the other storylines. He's been talking with Nikki, and he's had his Sarge thing, and th that's definitely had its moments. I've enjoyed seeing him with Sarge, and I've enjoyed his struggle, but it wasn't talk-worthy, you know? It wasn't something that really got me charged up. So, fine, Jack, get the surgery. Hopefully it will get him out of the chair. Or, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, alternatively, what probably would have been an even better strategy for Sarge, who just got fired by Jack. Maybe Sarge could have kept his job if he just would have gone out and, uh, and picked up a picture of Victor Newman to wave in front of Jack's face. Like, I could see Jack standing at one, sitting at one end of the room in the, in the wheelchair with Sarge and a picture of Victor on the other, other side of the room and Sarge just saying, come and get it, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> Probably his hatred for Victor Newman is one of the only things that could get those legs moving again. <laughs> that would have been an even better storyline, I think. <laughs> but, que sera. I do think there are now starting to become some interesting elements of the storyline. And specifically, I am loving that this is creating a Nikki versus Genevieve battle royale. It's really good. Genevieve and Nikki ran into each other at the coffee house today, and it was, it was exactly <laughs> quip for quip. Each woman had a little dig to throw in, and it was glorious. Genevieve, of, of course, has detected that Victor is a huge weakness of Nikki's, and specifically insecurity where Victor is concerned is a huge weakness of Nikki's. And uh, Nikki has detected that Genevieve has an insecurity when it comes to her business skills. So each woman has honed in on each other's weakness. And when they get together, it is just a read fest. They are just raiding each other and it is beautiful. <laughs> I personally would love nothing more than to see Nikki rip Genevieve to shreds then uh, just sprinkle her over tortilla chips and, and maybe add some olives and some meat and some cheese and, and, and have a nice um, nacho platter <laughs> with Genevieve's remains. That's what I would love to see. But it's still interesting. Like I said, it, it, Genevieve is a character who I'm kind of loving to hate. She really embodies that term um, in many, many ways for me. Now... Nikki just straight up, hate, straight up hates Genevieve, and Nikki is doing the right thing by warning Jack to stay away from her. If I were Nikki, I would do the exact same thing. Nikki has walked in on interactions between Jack and Genevieve. She's known that Genevieve has been hovering around the house, and Nikki knows that something's up. Where Genevieve is, there's a, a cyclone, like a cyclone of trouble surrounding her. So Nikki's advising Jack to stay away from her, and I was really actually disappointed the way Jack reacted to Nikki, kind of rudely when she tried to give her opinion about his life. I mean, you can't let someone into your life to be there for you during the bad times or the and then just expect them to, to not give opinions about other things. Nikki's been there for Jack the entire way. If you're going to accept her help on a day-to-day -day basis, probably helping load your ass in and out of the car, of the van, or whatever, you have to accept that she's going to have opinions about other things that you're doing. And I felt bad that he was kind of treating her like crap about the Genevieve situation. He got a little hostile with her and kind of told her to butt out. When I think that <clears throat> Nikki was right on and... Jack was probably just worried that she was going to get in the way of his terrible plan to go through with this marriage of Genevieve, with, to Genevieve. But the big development at the very end of Friday's show, the entire time that this negotiation between Jack and Genevieve is going on, Jack told her explicitly more than once, we're not going to tell anybody about this marriage and this beauty of nature deal until it's already done. We're going to do it. We're going to go next week to Vegas. We're going to get the marriage over with. I can't believe she thought this was ever going to happen. We're going to get married. Then we're going to sign the papers for beauty of nature. And every then we can announce it to the world. So what does Genevieve do? <sighs> She can't help herself. There's been a development in her life. She runs straight to Victor to brag to him that... Not only is he not going to get Beauty of Nature because she's selling it to Jack, but she's also going to marry him. Jack is there for her, and she doesn't need Victor. She doesn't need any of this because Jack is now her man. Well, Victor sees through it immediately. <laughs> and he tells her, look, sister. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but... This is not going to turn out the way you want it. 
you are going to slowly start to be very disappointed. Jack is going to take that company from you. He is using you and you're going to be hurt. And Genevieve doesn't want to hear it, of course. She doesn't trust Victor. She confronted him about the fact that he set her up with the Japanese official. So why should she take Victor's word for anything? And I also think that Genevieve just has these blinders on. She just sees what she wants to see. She does what she wants to do. And anything else that's going on in the peripheral, she ignores. And it's just going to end up being her downfall. Except <laughs> that she heads back after this meeting with Victor, heads back to Jack's house, enters through the back door. How rude. <laughs> You're not his wife yet. Use the front door and the doorbell. She enters through the back door. And she walks in on a conversation between Nikki and Jack. And as a result of Nikki's pestering of Jack, he finally reveals to her, look, I don't love Genevieve. I don't want to have anything to do with her. I don't want to marry her, but I'm going to get this company away from her. So you just butt out. Let me do my thing. He revealed all. And, of course, we get that tight shot of Genevieve in the kitchen looking shocked over hearing this information like, oh, Jack played me? How could it be true? <laughs> and it was a double whammy because it's the crushing reality of the situation with Jack and her heart being on the line. And plus the fact that, sorry, Genevieve, once again, Victor was right. Ugh, Jack had this whole deal in the bag. He really did. There are so many different entities going after Beauty of Nature, and Jack was sitting pretty. He was going to let them all knock each other out while he ended up having Beauty of Nature placed palmly, placed palmly, placed squarely in the palm of his hand. It was a beautiful plan that just got ruined, and the question that's going to be, I think, revealed next week is what is Genevieve going to do now? Because there's certainly the possibility that she will go ahead and uh, sell the company to Jack and get him in this marriage, whether she wants to or not. I can almost see her going through with the whole Jack thing anyway, no matter what. But <laughs> she might also turn around and sell Beauty of Nature to his biggest, number one, lifelong enemy, Victor. And Victor, my goodness, Victor wants Beauty of Nature in a very unhealthy way, in my opinion. I mean... Not only is he having trouble maneuvering Genevieve, which if she's such a amateur, why is he having such a hard time manipulating her? And he is. He's setting <laughs> bear traps for her every week. And she just seems to somehow miss them. But he also is not really even in the financial position to buy Beauty of Nature. He wants it like he's salivating over Beauty of Nature enough to where he is potentially going to put his personal assets at risk by trying to buy it. He lost a huge fortune in the lawsuit with his children. What did they each get? Was it like half a billion dollars or something? I mean, you can't, no matter who you are, I'm sorry, you lose a couple billion dollars <laughs> and it's going to hurt. So he, I think it must be really, really hard for Victor to hear that his net worth is not as much as it used to be. And that's pretty much what Michael had to straight up tell him this week. Now, Victoria, on the other hand, is, I think, the only person other than Jack who really should have Beauty of Nature, who kind of has all of the qualities it would take to, to have Beauty of Nature. Victoria has the experience, direct experience with the company in the past building it, and now as the CEO, 
she has the money, she's absolutely in the financial position to buy it, and she has the drive to take it where it needs to go. So I I like the idea of Jack getting the company, but I mean, I, I think a runner up at least would have to be Victoria for me. I think that it would be good for her. She's got a lot going on right now and it would be good for her anyway. She It's all she's ever wanted. Give, give, give Victoria Beauty of Nature if Jack can't have it, I think. Also, I guess I have to feel sorry for Victoria a little bit because I cannot help thinking that I would hate to have Victor as a father. Can you even imagine? Can you even fathom what it would be like to have this man as a father? They went head to head this week, Victor and Victoria, both, of course, over beauty of nature. And Victor came to Victoria's house, I guess to try to talk her out of buying it. And rather than maybe going the way he intended, it turned out coming off as threatening. The way I interpreted it, he straight up threatened Victoria to stay away from beauty of nature. And it was very intimidating. It was very scary. He, for some reason, this whole beauty of nature issue has ignited this ugly flame in Victor. He just wants it at all costs and he refuses to lose. And it just is really making him look like a total icky jerk. And I don't even understand why. Why is this so precious? Why is this more important than your family? I just don't identify at all. And I guess part of it is too. If this whole beauty of nature thing for the Newmans were just a spirited family con competition, if they were all kind of going for it, but in the background it was sort of a, yeah, we still love each other, uh, it's just a game, it's just business. If that was the vibe, then it would be one thing. But they're all taking it way, way too seriously. It has become vehement. And Nick is kind of caught in the middle. Nikki is, again, watching business tear her family apart for about the hundred millionth time, and it's so unnecessary. I wish that Nick would try to step in and somehow gingerly f help fix the situation, but Nikki seems to be the only one who can see what's really going on here. Nikki approached Victor this week to try to help him put things in perspective. And Victor just, he blew up like a giant overgrown baboon. <laughs> and he started huffing and puffing and just getting really salty, really mean over the whole thing. And again, it resulted, it's like every week, it's Victor in his chair being a baboon <laughs> and Nikki trying to talk it through with him and it always ends up in just her leaving his office being like every conversation they have ends up as okay well whatever Victor just whatever and Nikki storms off but yet she will go over to Victoria's house and have a conversation with Victoria and Abby where they're all talking about what a jerk Victor is and Nikki will sit there and defend him why it's becoming lost on me it really is Nikki and Victor's relationship is mind-boggling. I don't even know if Nikki and Victor... I don't even think Nikki and Victor have a relationship. Nikki and Victor have an ongoing argument. So the other interesting element that's coming into play here is Tucker. And there is this implication of a relationship that has happened in the past, way, way past, between Tucker and Genevieve that he thinks is somehow going to give him an edge of getting beauty of nature. He wants it just like everyone else. And I just want to talk a second about this relationship between Tucker and Genevieve because from 
all week it's been mildly implied that they knew each other from the past. And in fact, it was briefly implied a couple of months ago at someone's wedding. I can't remember who, but it was implied. Maybe it was a funeral. Weddings, funerals, I'm getting them mixed up. But it was implied that they did know each other from back in the day. And the preview from Monday's, for Monday's show had a conversation between Tucker and Genevieve where she says something to him like, you didn't tell Ashley about us? And I felt like there was an implication there of a romantic relationship that had happened between Tucker and Genevieve. And I kind of think that seems weird to me. I distinctly remember Genevieve saying that she had never been with anyone but Colin. Colin and her were together for for through thick and thin. I mean, that was a relationship. That that seemed closer to love than anything else that uh, that she's experienced because for all you can say about Genevieve and Colin's relationship, they did stick it out. And I totally remember her saying that she had never slept with anyone other than Colin, and I think it was when she she revealed that as she was getting involved with Jack right at the beginning. So uh, I am get I if if it turns out that there's that they had a romantic relationship, I'm going to be annoyed because that's totally inconsistent. I suppose she could have been lying. I mean, that, that could she certainly could have been lying to Jack about that. But the other element that kind of bothers me is I think in what universe. <laughs> Would Genevieve and Tucker run in the same circles? They are totally different. The, to the best of my knowledge, Genevieve and Colin pretty much lived in Australia for a large portion of their lives. Why would Genevieve have even been hanging around with Tucker? He was this fast-moving music executive, whereas Genevieve has always been painted as this sheltered little girl. She probably <laughs> went to Australia on a school work program or like as part of a study something, study abroad program or something, and she ended up getting sucked up into Colin's world. And I just wonder why on earth Colin's world and Tucker's world would have ever crossed paths Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just being picky. But the connection feels a bit contrived to me. <laughs> but we'll see where it goes. Who knows? That more could be revealed next week, and I'm sure it will be. Because Tucker wants Beauty of Nature now really, really bad. He's made up this fake fight with Sophia to try to get information that's going to help him out with Beauty of Nature. They're staging fake fights not only within the family, but now out in public so that the business community also believes that they're at odds so that Sophia can kind of sneak in and get information that Tucker needs her to get. And it still feels a little out of left field for me. Why does Tucker even need beauty of nature? Why does anyone need beauty of nature? But why specifically... Does Tucker need beauty of nature or want beauty of nature? I can see completely why Victor wants beauty of nature. Adam sold it right out from under him, and he felt he, he wants it back. Then again, it was Victor's fault, of course, entirely, for putting beauty of nature on the line. If Victor loved beauty of nature so much, why did he gamble with it when it came to Adam? But I can completely see why Victoria wants beauty of nature. She's always wanted beauty of nature. It's right up her alley. She's been working in cosmetics division of Newman Enterprises her entire life. She built beauty of nature from the ground up. Yes, with her father's money, but she built it from the ground up. It makes sense that she would want it. Jack wants it because he feels it was stolen from him by Genevieve. I can even see why Ashley would want it. Why Jabot would want it. It's their line of work. Cosmetics is their gig. But <laughs> Tucker is in no way connected to or have any he has no or have any experience in cosmetics. <laughs> 
So why is he going out of his way for this? Why would he be willing to shell out a huge amount of money for this? And the only thing I can figure is simply that Tucker just enjoys the chase. He just enjoys winning. And I have to ask the question, Tucker, is winning worth destroying your relationship with your wife? Because <clears throat> Ashley told him, Ashley was the one that told him that beauty of nature was coming into play. She was talking about it with her husband under the context of uh, Jack. And, tell, and confiding in Tucker about what Jack was planning on doing. And immediately, Tucker's business wheels started turning as she revealed this information. He, he said to her, oh, Beauty of Nature is, is back in play? Uh, and she, she looks at him like, Tucker, I'm trying to have a conversation with you about my life. This has nothing to do with business. And he can't seem to shut it off. He still is thinking about business when his wife is needing him. And Ashley, on several occasions, mentioned to him this week, I need you to keep that information confidential. I need you to view it as me telling you this as your wife, not as a business commander. Then Tucker goes and meets with Genevieve. He says, well, if I, if I hear it from someone else, then I'm going to still go after it. Why? It's not that Ashley, it, it's not that he should act on the information because it, no, revise. It's not that he shouldn't act on the information because Ashley gave it to him. Ashley's argument, the correct argument, is that Tucker should back off this beauty of nature thing because family is involved. That's the reason he should back off. It means something to Ashley. Therefore, he should back off. I'm telling you guys, I'm annoyed by it. I like Tucker and Ashley. I, I want to like Tucker, and this whole thing is becoming greedy. And I'm telling you right now, if Tucker doesn't back off, <laughs> I'm going to start calling him a name that rhymes with Tucker but it's not as flattering. Now Catherine is throwing her hat into the ring for Beauty of Nature too. You've got to be kidding me. It is like dogs scrambling for a piece of meat. That's all it is. <laughs> I'm acting annoyed, but I do love it. It gets, gets me going. I love business storylines. Those are my favorite. So I love this. Don't get me wrong. My irritation, my pa it's, it's passion. It's, not, it's, it's just passion for my show that I love so much. But I could not believe it. Nikki sat down at Glowworm with Catherine and learned that Catherine had kind of been keeping her ear on what was going on with Beauty of Nature. And Nikki's, again, confiding in Catherine, trying to tell her what's all going on and how this whole thing is ripping up her family. And Nikki asked Catherine to step in and buy it. Just take the decision out of everybody's hands. Just you buy it. And we'll be done with the entire thing. I could not believe it. I have no idea if if Catherine's going to end up doing it. But it cannot be some coincidence that this is coming up at the exact time that Catherine hires Neil back as CEO of Chancellor Industries. Yay! I am really happy about that. I love Neil. <clears throat> I love Neil. I love seeing Neil in business action. He needs a strong business storyline. Dang it. And I always enjoyed his friendship with Catherine, and it was a wonderful scene, the Neil and Catherine um, reconciliation. I, I totally and thoroughly enjoyed their dynamic together, and Catherine, Catherine made a mistake, but 
it's time to forgive and Neil needs a job <laughs> so I was very glad to see him back at the helm and I'm interested to see how he's gonna factor into this I would love to see Neil come in and one-up these people Neil has been playing second fiddle for in business to these people for far too long Catherine gives him the autonomy that he never had at Newman and I would love to see him wield it you know I would <laughs> kind of surprised that Neil had to kind of break it to the rest of the family that he was going back to work. He called a meeting with Devon and Sophia to tell them that this was his decision. It was a little surprising because I think, well, I mean, what's the big deal? Catherine's done a lot of good stuff too to, to help make up for the bad stuff that she's done. So to me, I thought, eh, you just... Give the woman a break, will ya? And I was pleased to see that that is what ended up happening. Both Neil and Sophia were like, fine, go work to go work for Catherine. We 100% support you. And I think that the decision by Neil helped to kind of prime the pump for Devon. Catherine actually went to go pay a visit to Devon this week. She even went out of her way to learn sign language so that she could communicate with him. And it was very touching. That is a huge show of love. It wasn't her throwing down a couple of million dollars for his record studio or throwing down a couple of million dollars for an experimental surgery. It was Catherine sitting down and learning something taking time to learn something so that she could communicate with him and I really appreciated that and I think that he really appreciated that that gesture went a really long way with him and they sat down and had this heart to heart and they decided to, to end up burying the hatchet and it was it was really good because Devon said you know I'm not I don't know if I'm ready to forgive you yet and Catherine in just such a powerful statement said to Devon you have all the time in the world. I don't. You know, she's only, she, you know, her time is limited. I hate to say it. God, the thought of that just tears me up. But her time is limited, and she wants to make the most of it. And that means getting to know her grandson. And, and Devon is young enough, I think, to where he doesn't completely understand that life is short. And that after she's gone, he probably would have a huge amount of regret not getting to know her and holding on to a grudge that's just really not necessary. Again, I said it last week, when someone reaches out to you, I believe that you should reach back. Because it wasn't easy for her to eat crow and to go back to him. And, and I, I needed to see him forgive her. And I'm really glad that he did. So... I think Catherine is kind of getting her ducks in a row. She is. She's kind of trying to make amends in a couple different ways. I hope that's not indicating anything, but that, that sentence that she said about not having that much time, it was haunting, very haunting for me. And some, I still kind of think she looks thinner than she did in the past. She's just so tiny. She looks amazing, but just she is so tiny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm very happy with how everything is is working out. I'm pleased with the Devon situation. I'm pleased with the Neil situation. I don't like that Sophia's having to lie to Neil about the Tucker feud. And she doesn't like it either. It's certainly not something that she relishes. But they were having this convert Sophia and Neil are having this lunch at the athletic club this week. And, my goodness, I, they're sitting across from the table from each other. And I just find myself wondering, do you think that Neil and Sophia have sex? They're married, they have a child, but it seems weird even when they call each other baby or something. There's no spark whatsoever. But So that's a really good question. I really want you guys to answer that this week. Think about it. Do you guys think that when all is said and done and, and Neil and Sophia go home at night, are they sleeping in the same bed and are they having sex? <laughs> Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about that because uh, it's, it's such a stark contrast to watch the scenes between Sophia and Neil 
and the scenes between Neil and Harmony. Neil and Sophia are like, blah, 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 boring. And then Neil and Harmony are chit-chatting it up. They're talking about pff, lots of different things. Culture, they're laughing, they're razzing on each other a little bit. They're mixing it up, quoting some Robert Frost. <laughs> roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by moment between Neil and Harmony this week was so injected with sex juice. <laughs> I could barely, like, I've never heard Robert Frost before and thought, hmm, I want to get down. <laughs> and that was totally the vibe. There was that moment where it was kind of clear that they you know, in another universe, could have really gotten into each other, but they unfortunately are not available at the same time. And Harmony made that point this week, earlier in the week. She was at the coffee house, kind of wanting to hit. She was feeling a little restless and flipping through her phone, trying to find somebody to call. Looked at Neil's number, wanted to call Neil, but just, I think, kind of remembered Tucker's words and didn't feel comfortable with it. So she ended up running into Sarge, and I don't know, it was just, it was kind of weird that, <laughs> it was just kind of weird that she sort of started opening up to a stranger, but he was there and she started to talk and she did make a comment about, n you know, not really being able to meet guys who were available. It was just a brief little tell that she l really does like Neil, but he's not available, so she's not opening herself up to that. Now, I don't know if it's possible that, I don't know, maybe uh, Harmony and Sarge could start to, I don't know, get together? Well, get, do something in the meantime? I'm not sure exactly. It is only because of you guys that I know that they played a couple, uh, like a major couple, a power couple on the soap that they were on. <sighs> Guiding Light, all my children. If I just say all the soaps, I'll, I'll know which one it was. I just don't know. I don't know the other soap. I know... I know YNR, <laughs> I know a little bit about Bold and the Beautiful, I know a little bit about Days. Everything else is sort of a wave of question mark? A wave of woo to me. So I know that they, uh, I do know just because of you guys though, that they were a couple on um, their their own soap. So I'm sure that was awesome for, for some fans to see them back together again. And, and it was really cool. Unfortunately, now that Sarge is fired, I don't know if he's going to be leaving the show. He's been fired from Jack. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be leaving the show. It's kind of a good question. We'll have to wait and see if he starts popping up within the next couple of weeks. Certainly, at this current time, there is no real love lost between Harmony and Sarge. She started to open up to him about her struggles, her addiction struggles, because Sarge had mentioned, oh, because she had seen him at uh, AA, that's what it was. She had seen him at a, an AA meeting, and she assumed that he was an addict, too, and she needed someone to talk to. She was obviously fiending, and Sarge detected that and just let her talk and didn't mention that he's not actually an addict. He was there as a sponsor, and as soon as he revealed the truth about that, Harmony got really offended, really mad at him, really yelled at him in public. Like, how could you let me go on when you don't even know? You're not even an addict. You don't even, you don't even know what the struggle's like, so how could you let me open up to you? Which I felt was kind of a weird, um, I thought she was being a little hard on him, personally. I thought that he was trying to help her. I didn't think that he intentionally kept anything from her, but maybe that was just the way I was seeing it. What do you guys think? Did Sarge misrepresent himself to Harmony? I just really quickly have to say that... Chloe did an impression of Angelina this week that was dead on. <laughs> Elizabeth Heinrichsen is quite a, quite a, 
quite a good little comedian there. I think so much of the crap that the, that this character has gone through within the last few months was I just felt redeemed. Everything felt good again when I saw that impersonation of Angelina. It was funny. I wish I could tell you what day it was if you missed it, but dang, it was dead on. It was spot on. She was really good. So. <sighs> Chloe and Victoria came up with this plan to get Carmine out of the way. I like Chloe and Victoria's friendship. It's just kind of unfortunate that their partnership kind of screwed things up. Kevin had separately had a conversation with Carmine that was really good. It was really honest. It was seemed really healing. By the way, before I forget to say this, every time I look at Carmine, and I haven't seen it very much of him lately, I'm sure once I get used to him it'll be different, but every time I look at him, I think he looks like Chance. He looks like a bad version of Chance. Like, you have Spider-Man, where there's good Spider-Man, and then you have Black Spidey, Bad Spidey. Carmine looks like a, 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 a bad version of Chance. So I kind of, we all know how much Chloe loved Chance, so he must be looks-wise right up her alley. We'll have to see if that plays a factor in all of this. But Kevin had a conversation with Carmine and they decided to bury the hatchet. Kevin told him the truth and Carmine accepted it and he was just ready to leave town. Until Chloe and Victoria decided to put their little plan into action. Chloe comes marching into the coffee house and <laughs> reams Carmine a new one. She's just like, I don't like you. I want you to go away. Stop ruining my life. And just really lays into him. And the second she stops, he says, are you, are you finished now? Can I, can I talk? Um, yeah, everything was worked out until you just opened your big mouth. And now just for spite, I'm going to stay. Jeff is a lizard. Take two. <laughs> Nobody seemed to comment on my theory last week that Jeff is a lizard and <laughs> I'm kind of offended because I, now that I look at him, realize it constantly. I just, every time I see Jeff, I think he is a lizard. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he flicked out his tongue and got flies for dinner and that's how he ate. Uh, but... <laughs> Apparently no one else shared my opinion, although I'm pretty sure that you're going to share my opinion on this. Jeff is also a scumbag. A real big scumbag. We all knew this. We all knew this. What we didn't know is that this entire time, for sure, Jeff is Chelsea's father, but not only, he... It was and is married to Anita. Blah! I was kind of hoping Anita was going to be gone. And it just doesn't look like that's going to happen. They're still married. So in addition to being a lizard and a scumbag, Jeff is also a bigamist. This is not going to end well. Because I do think that he loves Gloria and in their own strange and weird ways they need each other and this is just gonna absolutely destroy them Ugh. I don't I honestly there is such a huge part of me I'm really sorry but there's just a part of me that wants both Anita and Chelsea to just go away I just can't seem to warm up to either of them. And there's been so much focus on Chelsea and Adam within the last couple of weeks. I think using a, a very well-liked character, Adam, to try to warm people up to Chelsea, who I'm sure was not a particularly well-liked character after all of the con that she was pulling on Billy and Victoria and being ridiculous. And it's just not working for me. If you like Chelsea, that's totally good. And I, it's not, I don't like hate her. I just don't like her enough to have her be with Adam. I just really hope that it's not heading toward a romantic thing. They're, if it's friendship, it's fine. I just am not particularly interested in it. I'm glad that he was there for her this week. That absolutely needed to happen. Um, so basically, this week, Chelsea and Adam had another 
friendship moment hanging out at the athletic club which is pretty much what they do Chelsea was venting to him about everything going on with Victoria and almost indicating that she would really like to flee she would really just like to get the hell out and um, get on with her life Victoria micromanages her she's got Abby staying there at the house keeping watch on her 24 7 and add to that she's pregnant and feeling crazy and she's just not in a good place right now and Adam's just there listening which I appreciate after their meeting was over she leaves and forgets her cell phone so Adam follows her home to Victoria's house to give her her cell phone and this huge argument ensues it is Victoria and Abby versus Chelsea and Adam and of course Victoria is pleading uh, as a matter of fact that's not even the right word Victoria is ordering Chelsea to stay away from Adam and I have to admit Victoria did have a pretty good point she said to Chelsea you know the last time Adam was hanging around with a pregnant woman he stole her baby <laughs> so that's got to give you pause doesn't it as a pregnant woman what Victoria didn't uh, mention though was uh, also one of the last times that Adam was hanging around with a pregnant lady he put on a purple dress and spooked her so badly that she fell down the stairs and miscarried her baby so let's not forget about that too I can see Victoria's point I can see anybody's argument for wanting to uh, keep Adam away or to to, I, to to stay away from Adam anybody in the world has a million reasons to stay away from Adam but at the end of the day it's your choice if you choose to get involved with him, you're gonna, you gotta live with it. Whether it goes good or bad, and it might very well go good, you have to live with that decision. So I don't like the fact that Victoria is pushing Chelsea around. She's on Chelsea's ass constantly. Even, as, and with Nikki there pushing in the background, even Abby is like, Victoria, Nikki, maybe we should back off. She hasn't done anything wrong. So this entire fight happens, and uh, I, I'm sorry, Victoria and Billy had Chelsea right where they wanted her. She signed their papers. She ha has been good lately. She hasn't done anything to provoke them, and Victoria had to push her too hard. She tried to get involved too much in her life, and it backfired on her. Chelsea storms out, leaves the house, and nobody knows where she went. Adam and Victoria and Abby are left behind arguing, but everybody is, of course, fearing that she's foolish, that she's split. She's leaving town. She's going to go back on her deal. Victoria and Billy aren't going to get the baby. And, and, you know, Chelsea made a point to Victoria about, you don't really even care about me. All you care about is this baby. It doesn't matter whether I'm healthy or good or not. You don't care about me at all. And Victoria insisted that that wasn't the case. She's like, oh no, no, we care about you. And I'm sorry, Chelsea was right. Victoria cares about the baby and that's about it. As soon as Chelsea pops out the kid, they're going to give Chelsea a check, but they're not going to have anything to do with her. They're not going to go out of their way to include her in the child's life. If anybody's getting played here, it's Chelsea. But as soon as Chelsea splits, what does Victoria do? She goes straight to her dad. Oh, sure. It's convenient that Victor Newman is my father now. So she goes to Victor to try to ask him to help her find Chelsea. Just... It wasn't even a last resort. She immediately went to daddy. Ugh, Victoria is just being ridiculous right now. The only one who was able to find Chelsea was Adam. Adam goes off driving into the night looking for her and he finds her car by the side of the road and she's not in it. Where is she? He's looking around for her and all of a sudden starts to hear her crying out Chelsea has fallen into the ice. <laughs> she has stepped out onto the middle of a lake. She ran out of gas, was looking around for, a, she saw a light and started walking around. I, I, 
I think it's gonna be from the from just viewing from next week. I think she drove somewhere in the vicinity of the Abbott cabin. And so I think maybe she saw the lights from the cabin and then just started walking toward it and fell into the ice. Uh, and uh, <laughs> she's crying out for help. Adam reaches out his hand to, 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 try to, grab, to grab her and uh, successfully pulls her out of the icy lake that's icy in the middle of April. <laughs> saves her life. I don't know how many more lives Adam needs to save in order to redeem himself, but here's one more. Adam saves another life. And what do you know? Chelsea starts to go into labor. And of course, like, falling into an, the icy water in April will definitely induce labor. So... <laughs> She's going into labor, and again, from the previews from next week's show, it looks like Adam's going to drag her up to the cabin and help her deliver her baby just, in fact, uh, just like Chloe, in the exact same place that uh, Chloe gave birth. They should rename the Abbott Cabin Abbott General Memorial Cabin Hospital. <laughs> okay, well... That is just about going to do it for me for this week, folks. The only other thing I kind of just, I don't want to fail to mention is that Daniel's starting to soften up to Daisy. I think he might not go along with the plan to try to get uh, full custody. But in the meantime, he has successfully worked with Michael to get his shared custody, or, or well, not only his shared custody, but his ability to have unsupervised visitations back. And the kicker, which is really great, I think, he was able to get an amendment to Phyllis's restraining order so that now Phyllis can see Lucy as long as she's with Daniel. So it's making some progress in the right direction. I'm sure it will all be undone as soon as possible. <laughs> Things are going too well on that front this week. It was nice, but it probably won't last. So, what do you guys think? It is always a pleasure to read your comments. And I don't know, I think it's, I kind of have enjoyed this week. All of the drama surrounding Genevieve has definitely got me hooked. And I'm excited to see where you guys fall on that, what your opinions are. So, leave me a comment, please. Let me know what you're thinking. Good, bad, ugly, agree, disagree. Leave me a comment and let me know. Or if you don't have anything to say, how about just give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> just let me know you're still watching um, and enjoying. That means a lot to me. Oh my goodness, you guys. It's been a pretty busy week, um, but uh, it's Easter. I hope you guys have a happy Easter for anyone who celebrates. It's getting to look like spring, and that's good news, too. So it's good all around. I am going to be back next week, of course, to chat with you again about the show, and I'll be looking forward to seeing what else develops. So I'll be watching with you in spirit. Every time you watch the show, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there with you guys. I love you so much, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.